At the top, you can see the unit we're looking at is 101 copper. If you'd like to look at a different unit, you can select from the business a different unit to look at. So within 101 copper, we're currently looking at the rental agreement that started on 62819 and it's currently going. You could also click on this and look at an older lease that has ended if you'd like to. For this lease, you can see that it's Mindy and Mork Ork that are living there. They currently do not have anything due, both rent or fees. Also, if you look over here, we're currently holding a $1,200 security deposit, and we're currently not holding anything for prepaid rent. So prepaid rent might be if you initially collected the last month's rent or something like that. Down here, you can see a detail of what's happened. So you can see most recently, the, the rent was $1,200 for October. They made a payment. November, the rent was $1,200, and they also made a payment. So the running total is currently zero due. This shows the current history. If you want to show the full history, you can click that button and you can see the full history. You can see in this example, we have four pages of history as far as what's happened previously. The columns that you see here are configurable. If you click on columns, you can select or deselect different columns to see. Also, if you select the little gear, you're able to save these customizations or restore it. There's also a download button right here. If you click the download, you're able to export different items. So you can see um, everything that's visible here or all columns. You're able to export all pages or the pages um, that you're currently viewing. You're also able to export in different formats. So for instance, you can export into Excel or you can export into a PDF document as an example. Along the bottom are the common things that you have to do for a lease. The first thing is if you needed to add a security deposit or prepaid rent, you can click that to add additional amounts. The other one is if you have to add any one-time fee or rent. So for instance, a utility bill. So let's use that as an example. Let's say I needed to add a utility bill and let's say it was uh, due on the 4th. So you could put in, say, a $50, uh, let's put in a water, a water bill, one, two, three, four, five, for $50. Um, I'm going to make it a fee. If I leave this check mark, the, the tenant automatically gets a notification that we just added a $50 water bill. So let me go ahead and add that. So now you can see on the list here, water bill 12345 for $50 has been added and $50 is currently due. So if the tenant logs into their account, they would see that $50 water bill is being currently due. If you need to add a credit, which is the opposite of adding a charge, you can click this button here and add a credit. When a tenant pays through the system, everything is automatically updated and you would see a payment showing up here. If a tenant happens to send you a check or make a payment outside the system, you wanna go ahead and record that in the system so that all the history is there and so that the system doesn't continue to try to collect on an item. So let's say the tenant paid me the $50 that they currently owed by sending me a check. I would click the little button here that says tenant pays you directly you go ahead and put in uh, whatever date it is. You would put in who paid. You'd put in the amount, so $50 in this example. And I'm going to say paid by check 4321. If I leave this checked, the tenant will automatically get a receipt showing that they made a payment. So I'm going to go ahead and click add payment. So now you can see that we had the water bill for $50. And then you can see the day later, Mindy Ork paid by check 4321 for $50. So now the balance is back to zero. So you can hear, see here it went back to zero. At the end of a lease, 
you would typically release the deposits that you're holding. So here in this example, I could click on release and I will go ahead and release the full amount. You don't have to release the full amount if you want to hold part of that amount for a longer period. So this would typically be tenant is moving out. If you leave it check marked, the tenant would receive notica notification that you're doing that. I'm going to go ahead and click release. So now you can see the balance here has gone to zero and that amount has gone to their ledger. So that tenant currently has a credit of $1,200. So you can see it here, there's a $1,200 credit. And you can see it here because we just released that balance back to their account. If they owed things, you could go ahead and add anything they owed, for instance, cleaning or damage when they left. And then once you've done that, if you need to refund the tenant back, you would write a check to that tenant and you would do the accounting here. You would click, you refund tenant. And if you do that, you'd go ahead and click you know, the date that you're doing the refund. You put in who you're refunding, the amount, if you're gonna refund that full $1,200. And then this is uh, refunding the deposit. You can send them a receipt. And then you can go ahead and click add refund to be able to send that back. So in this example, I just processed a refund so now the tenant balance went back to zero and it's zero up here as well. A few other things you can do on this unit dashboard. So right here, if somebody is moving out and you wanna start advertising and, and taking new applications, you can click the little button here that says send rental application. So if you do that, you're able to either put in the person's name and email and then send it in the person an invite to fill out an application. Or you can copy this link and you can put it on your website or you can text that and the person would be able to fill out an online application. The next thing is if you have a new tenant, you can go ahead and click add new lease to add a new lease for this unit. Right now we have Mindy and Morik Ork on this lease. If you needed to edit it, you click edit. So for instance, if you're raising the rent or changing one of the terms of the lease, it's really easy to just edit what you currently have. If you click on tenant status, you can see a little bit more detail about the tenants that are currently on that lease. So you can see the names, the emails, the phone numbers, and the account number for each person on that lease. You can also see the status of the tenant signing up for an account, whether they've been invited, whether they've created an account, whether they're using auto pay or not. The next item down here is tenant email. So you can see a record of every email that the system has sent a tenant. So for instance, if I click tenant email, you can see the different emails. So for instance, the last thing that we did here is we did a refund. So it shows uh, the email's been sent, who it was sent, the title there, and over on the right here, you can resend it if the person did not receive it. You can forward it to somebody else, or you can view it. So if you click view, in this example, it says, Hi, Mork, your landlord has just issued a refund. It shows uh, the person's name, address, and the refund amount. So it makes it very easy to see all the communications that have been sent to your tenants. You can change the allocation of a payment. So right now we offer the option of applying a payment to the oldest item first, to rent first, or to fees first. If the payment is allocated to something and you wanna change it, you can click on that and you can move a payment as far as how it was allocated. There's a reporting button. If you click on that, you're able to select from many different reports as far as history, overdue charges, rent roll, um, you can download to QuickBooks. So there's a number of different reports you can download to. And last here is documents. So for this lease, you have the option of sharing documents with all the tenants on this lease, and tenants can also share documents back with you. There's an ORC lease, and this lease is currently being shared with all of the tenants. So when a tenant logs into their portal, they're able to look at that lease. So you have the option of, of taking a look at it, 
you can download it you can also stop sharing it with the tenants anytime you want to in this bottom section if the tenants have shared any documents with you it would show up there this is a brief tour of some of the things you can do from the unit dashboard if you have additional questions please let us know